My name is Matt Neff, and uh, we are in the Common Press, uh, which is a letterpress studio at the University of Pennsylvania in the School of Design. So the Common Press works as a teaching facility and um, uh, a center for research, and we work uh, on projects with museums and artists. We do printing with all kinds of people. Letterpress is a way of uh, printing type in images, and we use presses that span from about the 1860s to the 1960s. Before digital technology and even offset technology, type was either cut by hand um, or by a machine out of wood, and this is wood type, or it was cast um, in lead, and this is some lead type. This was a primary, uh, the primary way of printing uh, newspapers, books, magazines. What we do on these presses is um, they're relief presses, which means everything has a specific height, and we call that type high. So this wood type is the same height as this metal type. It's a standardized unit. Um, and we have rollers that roll over this type, and it only inks the very top surface. Um, so what you're doing is you're putting ink on the surface, and then you're applying pressure. And when you apply pressure, that embeds that ink into your surface. Usually it's paper. That's one thing that's specific about letterpress, is you're not only putting ink on a page, but you're pressing it into the page, and you get what's called an emboss. This press uh, is called the Vandercook. Uh, it's a number four. By the time this press was made in the 50s, it was already outdated. There was a new technology called offset printing that had taken off um, for commercial printing. But what would happen was all of the images and type were still in drawers. Uh, so they would proof them. So these are called proof presses. They would proof them on these presses and then take those images and shoot uh, film to go on an offset press from them. So what we've done here is called a lockup. We've locked the type in really tight to the bed um, because this steel drum will crush this type uh, if it's loose or um, too high. This stuff is uh, leading. The thing about lead is that it is toxic. Um, so we do use lead. Uh, so we just wash our hands, you know, a lot uh, while we're using it. Okay, this is the same ink company that uh, Ben Franklin used. That's crazy. It's a rubber-based ink. There you go. You can also use these presses to print images, it's not just type. For a long time, if you went to, uh, if you wanted an advertisement, say you owned a shoe store and you wanted uh, a poster for your shoes, you would go to a letterpress shop, they would design you an image and they would make it in into a block like this. And then <clears throat> the next year, if you needed another new ad, they would keep all of these, they would shelve them. So just like how we archive digital files, they had blocks like everywhere. When the technology shifted and these presses became outdated, um, a lot of stuff got scrapped, uh, the metal was scrapped, or these presses were sent to South America, but there are a lot of things still around, so we collect these things that, that become uh, antique, or, but we actually use them. They don't just sit in drawers and you know, like sort of just look at them, but we actually use them. And as artists, we're reappropriating what they can do now. Uh, so we do things like print on the letterpress, scan that image, turn it into another form, maybe an animated uh, GIF or a video piece, or we bring it back into silk screening or we make an etching of it. So we transform the letterpress. We don't just use it once, we use it multiple times.